everyone needs compassion Love that's never failing Let mercy fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a savior The hope of nations Savior, He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave So take me as you find me All my fears and failures Fill my life again Give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I very good morning welcome to St John's online such a great way to start our service this morning reminding ourselves that our God is mighty to save we meet in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ let me open with a prayer so Father God thank you that you are indeed mighty to save and may your presence be with us now as we come before you in worship both here in the church and online. I just ask, Lord, that you open our hearts, that we can just know how wonderful you are. Amen. Our All Age song this morning is Walking in the Light of God. And then we will have a very special video called The Seriously Surprising Story Video. So let's enjoy that. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. Walking in the light of God. So walk, 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 walk in the light. Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walking in the light of God. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. Jumping in the light of God. So jump, 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 jump in the light. Jump, 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 jump in the light. Jump, 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 jump in the light. Jumping in the light of God. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. 
hopping in the light of God. So hop, 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 hop in the light. Hop, 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 hop in the light. Hop, 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 hop in the light. Hopping in the light of God. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord. Sliding in the light of God. So slide, 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 slide in the light. Slide, 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 slide in the light. Slide, 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 slide in the light. Sliding in the light of God. So walk, 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 walk in the light. Jump, 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 jump in the light. Hop, 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 hop in the light. Sliding in the light of God. Walking in the light of God. Walking in the light of God. Two people moving and marching, thinking, head scratching about something big that's just been happening. But on the road to Emmaus from Jerusalem Way, two became three as another says, Hey, hey, says he, you've been thinking and head scratching. Has something big just been happening? <gasps> you've not heard about what's been happening? All of Jerusalem have been head scratching. What have I missed? asks the man. I'd love to know. Please tell if you can. It's about a man called Jesus and we thought he was coming to rescue God's people and send the Romans off running. He did and he said loads of cool stuff from a place up north called Nazareth. He told great stories and healed the sick. He knew people by name and what made them tick. Oh, remember that wedding? He turned water to wine, brought his friend back to life and his friend felt just fine. He was sharing and caring, just ask his friend Pete. He walked on the water with only his feet. He said shush to the storm and the storm was hushed. He did a miracle with bread and thousands were stuffed. Besides all this, his sermon up a hill had so many stories, super cool and brill. I can't believe it. What a big loss. A man so great who hung on a cross and on that cross, that's where he died. I feel so tied up in knots inside. And three days have passed, though it feels more like 70, because now we've heard that his tomb is empty. <laughs> That's right, you heard me. His body is gone. But who'd take his body? He never did wrong. You seem confused and out of the picture. So let me show you what it says in the scripture. It was always the plan, right from the start, because Jesus loved you with all of his heart. He died on the cross, but rose from the tomb. He came back to life so you can live too. And as they were moving, and still head scratching, two of them stopped, but the third kept on marching. Uh, hey, uh, don't go, please, the two say. The sun's gone to bed, so why don't you stay? Good point, says the third. Day has turned to night. I'll stop over with you two and then grab a bite. And as they sit down to eat, they close their eyes. He thanks God for the grub, then what a surprise! The two people stare and then rub their eyes. It's Jesus, not gone, but fully alive! And before they say seconds, there's more bread going round. Jesus just vanishes. He cannot be found. The two are left thinking and really head scratching. They'd just been with Jesus. Something big was happening. We must say we've seen Jesus, so tie up your shoes. Quick to Jerusalem, there's no time to lose. All along it was Jesus, the very same one. They were searching the scriptures with God's precious son. It's the biggest story that's ever been told about Jesus who's risen and never gets old. The two met with Jesus in the most surprising way. They shared the story and we still share it today. Do hope I do hope you enjoyed that marvellous video. We're going to come before God now, confessing our sins. Let's just take a moment of silence. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin 
and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, and we pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy us on us according to your love. Wash our way our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's good to say sorry to God and clear the air. Our next song of praise is led by Sue Wright, a beautiful song called Still. be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. Psalms 46 verse 10. Today's Bible reading comes from Psalm number two. Psalm number two. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, 
I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May I speak in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll be looking at Psalm number two. And to start with, let's look at verse one of it. An interesting question I often ask myself equally. So let's have a look at the question in verse one. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. It's a question and I think David is asking this question today and to be honest I've been asking it the same question. I've taken time to go through 
Christian faith and its teachings. And I've come to realize that all it has to offer is something that is beneficial and will continue to be beneficial for our good livelihood here on earth. Isaiah had to say this in verse, chapter 52, verse 7 of his writing. He says that the gospel is about good tidings, it's about proclamation of peace and proclamation of salvation. And this salvation in question, I think, God saw the need. He wasn't so much happy about the suffering people were experiencing on earth after the fall of man. I mean, when we go back to the book of Genesis, it would tell us about the whole story about how sin came and there was separation between God and man and affliction came upon humanity. God wasn't happy about it. And he had to send his son. Jesus volunteered to come and save us from our sufferings. But humanity kicked against it. David prophetically was asking this question. Herod tried everything to stop Christ when he heard about his birth. A lot of young children died because of that. Jesus had to be taken into exile to save his life. It wasn't the end. The Jewish authority, the Gentiles, they conspired as we read here. If you go to the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, verse 25 through 27, it will tell you clearly. The same thing being said here. Pontius Pilate with the Jews conspiring against Jesus without finding any fault in him. Tried everything to kill him. Just to stop that mission. Of course, Jesus died, which was in, in line with the plan of God. But that did not stop the purpose of God. Because his purpose was for Christ to die so that we will be redeemed, so that we'll be reconciled to himself, as many as will allow him to be Lord over their lives. Then where, even in that as you find out that Peter and John, who were held by this priest, who were working in the temple, and the Sadducees, why were they held? Because they healed a man who was crippled from birth. And people saw the power of God through them preaching of the gospel. And then they then gave in and submitted their life to Christ. But because the Jews want to continue to be in charge, the chief priests want to continue to deceive people with their wrong teachings, they decided to imprison Peter and John. And when they found out they could not hold them any longer because even the people who witnessed what was done through them, I mean the miracle, and they were afraid that they might revoke against them, they had to let them go. So when the, these two disciples got back to other brothers, they testify to what God has done and they began to give God thanks. And that was when they referred to this psalm in verse 1. When they were testifying to the power of God. So you find out that the problem we human beings with God is we want to be in charge even when we are not able. Because the Jews they must have known enough about this prophecy about Christ and his redemptive purpose for humanity. 
but they didn't just want to accept it because they want to continue to be in charge, ruling their lives and subjecting people to all manner of things, even when they know they are equally suffering. So today, this very test is encouraging. Even Christians today who are being persecuted in different parts of the world because of their faith, there are places they are not allowed to live out their faith in the public. And even they are being traced because of what they believe in. Their telephones are monitored. Everything about them are, are being monitored to make sure that they hinder them from following Christian faith. Government of some nations make laws that hinders people or hinder people from being Christian or professing that they are Christians. Why do you look at it? Everything about the teachings of Christian faith is what will allow us, enable us to live in peace and harmony here on earth. The core Christian teaching is about the love of God, which is being obedient to all the teachings that has been handed over to us in the scripture, which if you go through is for our own good. There is nothing in this very Bible that if we live according to it, will not give us that environment where we will live in peace and harmony and enjoy the good things that the Lord has given to us. And second part of it is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we find out that when we love our neighbors as ourselves, the problem of discrimination, the problem of suppression, will become a thing of past. But both the government and individuals, they have seen all these things, but they don't want to abide by it. They continue to kick against God's word. And in course of doing that, they are kicking against God. They are rejecting the Lordship of God. They are rejecting what Jesus has done for humanity at the cross of Calvary. And of course, they are crucifying Christ the second time. But when we look at this very text we've read, if you go to verse 8, it says, And I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. So God has promised in Christ Jesus that the kingdom of God belongs to Jesus himself. It has already been given to him. And nothing can stand against what God has promised. We've seen it even at the birth of Christ, all through his ministry and in the life of early Christians. Nothing humanity has done is been able to stop the work of God. The gospel is extending even to the outermost part of the earth as being promised in the scripture. So we should learn from the past. The leaders are being warned here in verse 10 that they should therefore be wise and turn to serve the Lord so that they will not be destroyed. You'll be wise enough to desist from being an instrument, an agent that is working against the will of God by turning back to him in repentance and yielding to him. Of course, there are a lot of things to benefit. And the best of those is to have eternity in God's presence and escape eternal judgment. And to Christians that are being persecuted and mocked and being mocked because of their faith, be encouraged. Most of us, even in our homes, are being rejected because of our faith. I wonder why someone will reject somebody who is a good Christian fellow, who try to live according to the 
teachings of the Bible. There is nothing to reject in there. It is something to embrace. But because the devil has blinded the mind of people, they don't want to have anything about God in their family. But if you are in that bubble or among those who are being chastised or persecuted because of your faith in the society or in your homes, be encouraged. Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 that we should not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of those ones who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So their, their work or uh, all they are doing, if you hold on to God firmly, cannot separate you from the love of God. Jesus has won the battle already. The kingdom has been established and nothing can stop it. And of course, our kingdom doesn't end here on earth. You are sure to be blessed even here on earth and even be in God's presence when you have finished your journey here on earth. So be encouraged. But one more, one more thing I just want to touch. Giving your life completely to God. Allowing Him completely to be Lord over your life involves giving in completely every aspect of your life we do struggle with certain things in our life there are things we want to reserve to ourselves god i am giving you this area but this area i just want to hold it tight no as christians may we kill that aspect of our life that tend to walk in line with the desires of the flesh just like people who are not followers of christ and giving completely for the Lord to rule over our lives so that his blessings will be complete in our lives. So no matter what you are facing as a result of your faith, hold firm to God. You are in the right path and there is a reward for that. And in it, you have peace because it's a gospel of peace. It's a good tiding. It's for salvation. Salvation in its entirety. And for those of you who have not made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, there is still offer because the gospel we preach is that of peace. It offers hope. It's that of love. The Lord is still waiting for you to submit your life to him. He's ready to forgive you all that you have done in the past. And he's ready to receive you full and for you to be part of what he's doing and to be part of him when our journey here on earth must have ended. It pays us to yield unto this great call to escape the wrath of God. Amen. Our final song of praise this morning is Love Divine. And after that, if you're watching online, please refresh your uh, browser or go back to the Facebook page to catch our new stream live from the church at 11.15. Love Divine.
Don't play.